on which we would we hold our graduation ceremony today the wurungari people of kulin nation and pay our respect to elder past present and future please remain standing the assembly is invited to sing the first verse of australian national anthem the words are on page number 31 your of your program booklet Yeah, it is my pleasure to introduce the official party of this afternoon ceremony. Sitting on the stage are members of VIT Council and members of VIT Academic Board. who plays very important role in governing vit at the institution i now call call upon the vit council chair mr peter bachelor to open the graduation ceremony and provide his welcome address please welcome everybody what a magnificent thing to see after such a, a horrible time in everyone's uh, lives. I'd like to congratulate the graduates here today for their efforts in 2020 and 2021 which have been extremely challenging for all. Your resilience, your perseverance and passion for learning will put you in good stead for the rest of your lives and your chosen career. and we hope that you valued your experience at VIT and you want to continue a lifelong learning in pursuit of your dreams VIT has certainly come a long way since it was started training in 2000 when it re received its uh, authority to be a registered training organization since that time we've expanded and grown significantly introducing higher ed in the mid 2015 and then continuing on so the the, the university or the, the institute is in certainly had tough times like us all in the last few years but we're looking forward to renewed growth and renewed opportunity and we're looking forward to introducing some new courses and and in improving the facilities and expanding our facilities i'd like to thank the staff for their efforts during this very testing time and also the CEO Arjun for his efforts in keeping the show on the road so students and graduates well done on a ma magnificent effort on getting to this point i hope you enjoy the proceedings uh, i think it's going to be quite lengthy so we will try to move forward as fast as we can um, i'd like to now welcome the provost andrew schoon to come and introduce the guest speaker Thank you chair. Uh ladies and gentlemen, it's with pleasure that I'd like to introduce to you our guest speaker for today's graduation, uh Mr Steve Sammartino. Steve wrote his first lines of computer code at the age of 10. I was probably reading John and Betty or something back in those days, um not doing computer codes. And he is one of Australia's most respected futurists. A media commentator 
Steve is the technology reporter for ABC Radio National and the in-house futurist for 3AW, where he provides expert assessment on the rapidly evolving technology sector. His breadth of experience gives him an uncanny ability to make sense of how technology is shaping society and the economy. Steve started his career in the corporate world, working in marketing for Fortune 500 companies, culminating in positions up to the director level. He has had multiple tech startups, and he launched one of the first sharing economy startups, Rentoid.com, which was later sold to a public company. He now invests in emerging technologies and has multiple advisory board positions. Steve's also done some very creative and inventive, uh, some would say crazy projects, including building a full-size drivable car entirely out of Lego. Built with 500,000 pieces, it has an engine made of Lego and runs on air. Imagine the floor of his uh, workshop when he was trying to put all of that together. Uh, Steve's the author of two best-selling books on the technology revolution. His latest work, The Lessons School Forgot, is a manifesto on how to future-proof your life and thrive in the technology era. I'm sure we will all be inspired and learn from Steve's inspiring words this afternoon. So please join with me in inviting and welcoming Mr. Steve Sammartino to give our valedictory address. So what we need to do is to make sure that the thinking, this is why this is called a commencement speech, is that it starts now. You have to continue to think. It's your ability to discern what is out there. I remember at school, when I was back at school, because I'm a lot older than you, did you know what they did at school when I grew up? They outlawed cheating. Cheating was outlawed. I got a note sent home to my mum. Hey, Steve, what's this? Cheating. I said I wasn't cheating. I said I was collaborating. And it's now at universities that the collaboration. Think about all the software companies that have done so well. Collaboration. Think about Zoom technologies. It's actually about the interchange of information and different ideas from different people. The old world that we're now exiting, we're exiting the industrial world. The industrial world was about machines, factories, fossil fuels, and power. And now, technology is actually about connecting. In some ways, it's a technology revolution which is underpinning connection. It's the connection between us that matters. So we have a really big shift in our economy. Now, in my career, I did a lot of things. I've had a really eclectic career. Let me tell you some of the crazy things that I've done. And it took me about 20 years to find the thing that I actually like to do. All right? So if it is at any point in your career you think, geez, I don't know if I like this job that much, don't worry. It's a temporary phenomenon. And you need to go through the journey to find the place that you actually want to be. It's the dead end that makes you turn around. Right? It's the mistake that helps you understand, I don't want to be here. And quick decisions are better than slow decisions. If I could make one change, it would be make decisions quicker to find out what I really wanted. And I didn't have the courage to do it. Uh, now, some of the things that I've done in my career, I had an egg farm. I had a clothing company. I sold toilet paper for the world's biggest toilet paper manufacturer. I was a nappy marketer. I uh, was, worked in the toothbrush industry. Uh, and I finally ended up in software where I was meant to be. But I majored in economics at uni mainly because I didn't know what I wanted to do when I grow up. When I grew up, it's like I didn't know what to do. Right? I studied economics. I'm like, what do you do after economics? Become an economist? I mean, I just went into business because I, I didn't know what to do. Now, there is one thing a lot of people say economics is useless. Why would you major in economics? But there is one insight with that. 
even if you don't major in economics, economics is always major because it's going to have an impact on your life, your economics, your ability to save. Saving money is an important, simple skill. It doesn't matter if it's 1% of your income. It's the process that matters. I remember I, I met a mentor once and I said, gee, I'd love, I'd love to work only half of my life. Work one year on, one year off, wouldn't that be amazing? Imagine if you could afford that. How wonderful would it be? And he said, well, you can do that, it's easy. He said, all you gotta do is live, live on half of your salary. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you live on half one year and then you spend the next half the next year when you're not working. That's what it, it's just, you sometimes have to open your mind on these possibilities. So I majored in economics and I worked in corporate for about 13 years. So my world for me with corporate took me a long time to find where I wanted to be. I didn't know. On the very first day, I remember I drove to the office and I was a university student before that. I went straight from university straight into work. And university, I don't know if it's still like this, but I, we only had like half a week of, of on campus time and in COVID, it's probably none. And I remember on the first day driving there, I drove home at six o'clock and I thought, I don't know if I'm gonna like this that much. I thought I should stick it out for a little while. So I stuck it out for 13 years. I thought that's good, let's just stick it out for 13 years and see what happens. But when I finally got the courage to leave, I started a software company called Rentoid.com. And this was an eBay for renting, where you could rent out anything that anyone wanted to use. And I want to tell you about how I lost a billion dollars. Do you want to hear about how I lost a billion dollars? I'm, I'm on the stage here meant to be telling you some good news, but I've got to tell you, I made some pretty silly mistakes. So let me be honest here and just open up the terrible error that I made. So I had a renting company where people could rent out things like lawnmowers and TVs and industrial equipment. And this was in 2005. And people were renting out themselves as drivers on my website. And I was worried about the legalities, so I removed people from that website. I had people renting out their spare bedrooms to people. And I was worried about the legalities and removed them from the website. Well before it happened, I had Airbnb and Uber on my website and I didn't have the wisdom to see where the market was moving. You see, what we need to do is to be able to see. We need to be able to pay attention to what's happening. And in hindsight, I'm pretty embarrassed. You know, like here I had opportunities, billion dollar opportunities, and I was living a little bit in the past. I was ahead of my time. I just didn't realize that that was going to happen in that marketplace. So it's important that you have a perception of what's really happening. Have you ever bought a car, you get your car, and then all of a sudden, the moment you have your new car, you see them everywhere, but before that, you don't see it. So you've got to train yourself to see the opportunities. Now, lucky for me with Rentoid, even though I didn't get the big success, I sold the software to a major car rental company, and I had an exit on that business. So I did a little bit uh, better than I thought I would. But you know, it wasn't working, the business model. I actually sold the wood chips. I, was, I sold the wood chips. The, the rental company itself wasn't working that well, but the software that I built was in demand by other companies. So sometimes, even though you're building something big, it's that little thing inside is where the value is. It's where the, so look for the little thing inside what you're doing, that small portion, you know, and stay a season. Always stay a season. If things aren't working out, stay a year. Don't stay four years if it's not working out, but stay a season. It's like a farmer who leaves in the, in the summer when it gets too hot, they're not gonna find what they're after. You have gotta at least stay one season. So that's what happened with Rentoid. One of the things that, that I did as well through this whole process, and this was probably the most impact on my career the whole way through, was writing a blog. I wrote a blog about technology, about technology and business the whole time through. And what that taught me to do was to look for ideas because I published one blog post every year for 10 years. One, one blog post every day for 10 years. I've written more than 3 million words on my blog. And at first, no one was reading it. Now it's got about 10,000 subscribers. But it taught me 
to keep working, not to stop studying. It made studying and noticing what's happening in the world a vocation. I had to look for that. So I did that blog along the way, and it, it ended up in book deals because I taught myself to write. I was a technologist who wasn't that good at speaking or writing. I was a coder. I was a marketer, but it taught me the skill of writing. And then that evolved, and I did it when no one was watching. What we do when no one is watching is the most important thing that we can do. Because it's what you do, because you want to do it, because you want to invest in yourself, is what gives you the ability to have self-belief and to say, here's what I've done in my own time. Let me give you a job interview tip. Do you want a job interview tip? I'll tell you what happens. I've interviewed hundreds of people over my career for jobs. And here's what they all say to me, every single one of them. If I'm looking for someone who's going to be a coder, if I'm looking for someone who's going to be in advertising, marketing, they all say the same thing, every single one of them. I say, why do you want to work at this company and in this industry? And every single one of them says, it's because I'm passionate about it, right? We all nod the heads, all the heads are nodding. And then you know what I say straight after that? It's true, you've got to be passionate, but you know what I say? I say, prove it. I say, prove it. I say, prove it. Prove that you are passionate, right? You have to prove that you are passionate about it. And the way that you prove it is by what you do in addition to your formal study. What are you doing in addition to your formal study that proves that you care more than everyone else in this room, that you care more than the other job applicants? You've got to prove it by doing that little bit more, by investing in yourself. So I worked in advertising for a period of time at a company called WPP, the world's biggest advertising agency. And there's another insight there. You know what I learned? I learned that I wasn't great at advertising, but I was great at pitching. At pitch, I was better at pitching, which is only 10% of the job. 10% right? of the job was pitching to win new customers. And during that time, we would lose a lot of the pitches, and the clients would say, hey, you guys didn't win the business, we're giving it to this other advertising agency, but we really loved your pitch. We really loved your pitch. I'm like, well, if you love your pitch, why didn't you pick us? And here's what I learned, is that the company doesn't always make a decision based on what is rational. They make a decision based on politics, who their friends are, what the boss wants. It's not all just what was the best option. Right? What is best? It depends on what they're doing. And when I was working in this advertising agency, learning the craft of speaking and pitching, I thought to myself, what if I just took that 10% that I'm really good at and turned it into a full-time career? Right? I actually thought of that. I thought, what if I just became someone who shared ideas? I've built a number of world-first technologies. I've written books. I've got the blog. What if I just share? Because that's what people want to hear my ideas more than actually make ads. And I took that small 10% slither. And inside you, inside you, you've got that one subject, that one idea, that you are better at, that you will be great at. You will work at a company and people will come to you and they'll say, yes, go and ask person X, person Y, they're great at that. They're gonna come and say, yeah, come, oh, can you show me this thing? You need to pay attention to that because inside that is your special skill and everyone has these special skills. Now, speaking of pitching, I wanna talk about the Lego car. Did you hear about the Lego car? It's had, it's had 100 million views on YouTube. It was a viral sensation but there's a crazy story about how it came about. Crazy story. So, it goes like this. I got a Skype message from someone that said, hi, I'm building a spaceship. That was the intro message. And I'm like, accept, straight away. And I got onto this phone call with this boy from Romania, a teenage boy from Romania. And he said, hi, you look rich. Can you please send me $10,000 for an experimental space project. That's what he said. And I actually answered his call and had a chat with him. And I found out that he was a super genius who learned to speak English on the internet. And he found me through reading my blog. And we ended up 
building the full-size drivable Lego car, which is in my garage in Werribee, in my dad's garage. If you want to come for a drive, just come over, all right? And if we crash, we'll just rebuild it. It's fine. Anyway, I was still working at the advertising agency when that happened. And viral, viral videos are a great way for advertising companies to make money. And so I said, hey, why don't we build this Lego car as a promotion for the company to get new business? And the company said to me, oh, no, we don't do that, Steve, because our business model doesn't work like that. The way our business model works is we pitch for a client, they give us this much money, and we make an ad for that much money, and that leftover bit's called profit. So I can't just give you $20,000 to build a Lego project. That's what my boss said. Hey! That's what he said. But guess what? But guess what? Guess what? Guess how I got the money? Guess how I got the money? I crowdfunded it on Twitter. I put a tweet up, which is still on there, saying I need 40 people, $500 each, for a world first project. And the next day, I had 80% of the money in my account. And I nearly went to the Bahamas with the money, but I didn't do that because I'm in the same business you're in, which is the business of trust. You're in a trusted institution here. People trust that you are qualified, that you've done the study, that you've done the work that you will deliver. And I delivered on that project. It went viral. Jay Leno rang me. He wanted to buy it off me for Jay's garage. It was an incredible project. It went viral. I got a book deal out of that. I got a book deal for, to do two books. And then I became a public speaker from the book deals, sharing my business ideas with companies around the world. I've done more than 500 speeches in 14 countries based on all the little pieces of my puzzle. And I want to tell you that your career, it's don't think in straight lines. It's not a straight line. It's a collage of little pieces of the puzzle. So that is where we're going with your career. You've got to think of the pieces of the puzzle that come together. It's funny, I used to get told off for speaking out too much at school in grade three, and I was always a speaker, but I needed to get some skills along the way to have something to talk about. All right? What you got in trouble for in grade three is so often the thing that you need to do in your career and find a way to make money out of that as you go forward into your job. So, I just want to talk about some advice before we go. Now, there's four things I want you to think about. Four things with your career. The first one is the wood chips. Always be thinking about the wood chips, the leftovers from what you've done and how you can turn that into something more. How you can turn that into something that would be waste but then become something more valuable the way you put it together. All of the things that I've done in my career were wood chips. Speaking, the blogging became books, the viral videos became advising advertising agencies around the world, the coding that I did on my part-time became a software company that I built and sold. They were all side projects. Side projects are what you do to invest in yourself and you can pull them into your work and your career later so that you can do more. So never forget that it's not just what you do in your job, it's what you do at the side which enhances your job. Another couple of things that I want you to remember is think about the Venn diagram, how things overlap. How are you going to get the overlap with writing and speaking and do it the way different things overlap? So I put marketing skills and software skills together. Always look for how things overlap. Another thing is never forget the one thing you should be loyal to. Loyal to. Often people say, I'm going to be loyal to the company I work for. And I think that's a bad idea. I'll tell you why. You've got to be loyal to the people inside of the company. The people inside of the company are where you'll build relationships which go beyond the company that you work for. They will last longer. And a company is not a real thing. It's just a financial construct. It's not a thing. The only thing in the company that matters is the people. So be loyal to people first and company second. And here's the crazy bit. By being loyal, 
to people, the company is the beneficiary. Okay? And the other thing is, you've got to invest more in yourself than you do in your job. And it's the same reason for loyalty. If you invest more in yourself, then you're doing two things. You're making an investment in your future, you're making the company get more than what they paid for, and you've also got an insurance policy so that because you've invested in yourself, you have options. Because as we know, the world can change radically and it can change quickly. I mean, I used to make my living speaking in rooms filled with people and then COVID came along. I don't have to tell you how well that worked out, but because I invested in myself, that's how I got my TV show up and running. I got the TV show up and running because I couldn't be in large rooms filled with people during COVID. So it's all these little pieces of the puzzle that you need to pay attention to because they're there for you. So just to finish up, I just want to tell you about this. Who's got a smartphone? Has anyone got a smartphone? I'm just checking in case no one's got a smartphone. I'm just checking. Here's the thing. Did you know what smartphones and sunsets have in common? That's right. Good. I'm glad. No one gets a better one. The world's richest people. Thank you. The world's richest people, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, don't have a better smartphone than you and me. They don't get a better sunset than you or I. What they get is the same one. And this technology revolution has given you a gift, a gift of knowledge the day that it happens from the world's best thinkers. If you will choose to invest your time in things that will make you better and smarter at what you do. We can watch TikTok videos. They're fun. I love a good TikTok video. I love it. Don't worry about that. But if you will invest in this, the option that you've been given, no one gets a better one. The world's most powerful tool is available to all of us. You've got all the world's knowledge at your fingertips. That has never happened before in human history. When I learned to code, I had to go to the library and hope they had a book. I had to hope they had a book in the 1980s. I did all the books there, and then it was done. That was the end. Not you. You have the dignity of choice. This is an, a product which is a supercomputer. Okay? Average people like you and me have supercomputers. And the point about this is that if you'll embrace the powers that you've been given to continue to learn, and to invest in yourself, then I promise you, your future will be anything but average. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sam Martino, for your wonderful speech and advice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now I would like to invite uh, VIT President Mr. Arjun Surepaneni to present the token of appreciation to our guest speaker. We now come to the session of degree conferral. Professor Seed Nair, Executive Dean, Higher Education, will present the graduates. Professor Richard Carter, Chairman of VIT Academic Board, will present certificates to the graduates. Please. Are you guys ready? All right. Graduates, please rise. Graduates, rise. Stand up, please. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I present to you the following graduates, including those in absentia, who have successfully fulfilled all the conditions prescribed and are entitled to the award of bachelor's and master's degree as stipulated by the Victorian Institute of Technology Academic Board. Thank you. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chairman of the Academic Board, Victorian Institute of Technology, I admit the duly authorised graduands here, present and in absentia, to the appropriate awards and to the rights and privileges of those awards. Congratulations.
All right, graduates, please see, be seated. Mr. Chair, I have the honor to present to you the graduates on whom you have conferred the degree of Master of Information Technology and Systems. Mani Babu Ala. <laughs> Navoti Abhavikrama Gunaratna. Farhan Ahmed. Vinod Reddy Ailini. She's here, she's here. Okay. Farooq Akta. Surya Teja Reddy Alavala. Amrit Tapal Kaur. Jeevan Teja Amudala. Sanya Anil. Siddharth. Ready, Anugu. Arshdeep. Arshdeep, call. Mohammed Aslan. Asmit Kaur. Aspinda. Aspinda Kaur. The other way. <laughs> Atul. Balraj Singh. Arvind, Arvind Bandarupali. <laughs> Srinivasa Rao Bandarpuli. Ashta Baro. Okay. Palak Baro. Sundar. Sundar Basel.
Vishalji Basiri. Sandeep Basanola. Sri Krishna Balakonda. Dinupa Verman. Mani Kumar Bartha. Mohammad Sujan Biswas. Rajesh Bala. Ramaya Krishna Chalasni. Arun Sai. Arun Sai Krishna Chalendra. Panrit Chamakura. Sai Sarat Reddy Chamakura. Chanchel. Minakshi Chawla. Avinash Cherukuri. Apuva Chabra. Suraj Reddy Chelikuri. Anand Paul Chaluka. Raul Chindam. Subhash Chintapale. Kunal Dang. Indra Deshaboy. Bangra Raju Dandu. Ranish. Ranish Reddy Donuru. Tarun Kumar Edukula. Venkat Sainad Alangeti. Sandip Reddy Gade. Gopi. 
Gopi Thirlok Chand Gadipati. Madanlan Gairi. Angaprit Garawal. <laughs> Shushma Garimela. Prashant. Prashant Gaulapati. Bargav Gola. Sai Priya Reddy Gopu. Guljit Kaur. Gurpreet Kaur. Adisha Hanti. Nitish Hanumanani. Adip Mohammad Harun Kushbu Kushbu Hasosa Hasora Usamprit Kaur. Shushmita Irkula. Ravali. Inumula <laughs> Dipika Jada <laughs> Jack Deep Call. Bharat Chandra Jampani. Mohammed Moin Javed. Lashika Jayasuri. Bindu Jala Sanjala Sanjana Reddy Jalalela Sai Santosh Jukanti no 
Tá, tá ali. Shivani? Kim? Shivani? Juneja. Tania Karia. Metalish Reddy Callum. <laughs> Santoshini Kamari. Vishva Pandira Kananga. Gautam Kumar Reddy Kantam. Radhika Kappa. Budhika is here. Budhika. Budika Karan Dagoda Sati Yang Sati Sati Ready Katakuri Aman Deep Am Sorry Aman Deep Call Amandeep Kaur. Balwinda Kaur. Ganandi. Stand up. Ganandi Kaur. Gundeep Kaur Gurjit Kaur Gurpinda Kaur Gurpinda Kaur Hush, free. Hush, free. Call. Harvinda. Call. Justin Deep. Call. Just need call. Jatinda call. Manjit call. Rajdeep Kaur Rajvinder Kaur
Raman Deep Kaur. Raman Pri Kaur. Savit, Savijit. Savajit, call. Sukjit, call. Sukvir, call. Virpal call. Annabel Khalil. Samir. Samir Ahmed Khan. Ramia Baduri Kodamanchili Ban hmm? <laughs> Banu Teja Koduru Ram Kolipaka Ashe Kuma Konga Prane Kuma Koni Wamshi Krishna Kurupati Malaysia Nirmala Koshan Gaurav Kokuri Sanket Kulkani Rajinder Kumar Tarun Kumar <laughs> Rudia Kura Z Man Lee Sai Kumar Lingapale Mohan Mohan Krishna Longugu Love Neat Kumar <laughs> Deep Chant Magu Luri Manika
mining kata maje print print <laughs> Prini Malavia Rachi Rachi Kawaljit Malhi Wasimha Wasim Salim Bai Mansuri Sajan Mawaha Heman Medasani Rishita Misa Sampanda Trilok Nath Mendu Sai Nath Marugu Karen Minhas Basalat Ali Khan Mir Abdul Wahab Mohammed Akhil Mohammed Fawaz Dastigar Mohammed Sanya Sri Kanda Mohammed Sanya Muthdat Baba Shavanti Munangala Sai Kiran Reddy Mutayala Sonia Sonia Rani Nitya Surendran Naya Chandu Namburi Nancy Nancy Nandini (laughs) 
Sai Kumar Reddy Nanuri. Bhagat Namiti. Naveen Nasaka. Neha. Neha. Somia Neela Mancha. Usha Santoshi Nella. Okay. Vijay Kumar Yada Awa. That's a tough one. Pankaja Palitinja Jaya Vikarama Pankaj Kumar Manali Prakash Bhai Pansuria Papinda Singh Aishani Patel Aneri Patel Arzube Patel Deep Patel Divyang Salesh Kumar Patel Manthan Patel <laughs> Namita Patel <laughs> Nilamban Patel Nishant Kumar Patel <laughs> Ronit Kumar Patel <laughs> Sunny Ramesh Patel Sunny Kumar Patel <laughs> Vignesh Kumar Patel <laughs> Vijay 
Bhavani Patibandala. Priyanka Padavali. Vijay Vikas Pada Mudiam. It's another tough one. Yeah. Sorry? Okay. All right, uh, Professor Andrew Flitman, uh, the uh, Deputy Chair of the Academic Board, will take over now. Who's next? Sanduni Ka Sewandi Belhapata Archichiga. Ajay Kumar Pendayala. Mandadij Pereira Munagama Pereira Wamsi Krishna Poluji Nikhil Kumar Potaraju. Pradeep Limbu. Likita Reddy Puchakaya. Srikan. Srikant Racha Rajvinder Kaur Danpreet Danpreet Rala Kitri Rambani Shanti Usha Ramesh Tarun Randini Deepak Rani Jasant Juna Gobio Sharwan Sandini Sanchita Saha Vish Sach Sashi okay. Sashi Sa Sashi Sashi 
Vishak Samasinga Gunasekara Sai Sekara Sai Teja Sami Shetty Lick it Lick it Sangha Varapu Sandeep Kumar. Giri Sandara. Santosh Taluri. Shushanta Sapkota. Akil Rakesh Saragdigari Manjot Ko Saran Satinda Satinda Kaur Savrina Savrina Devi It's okay. It's okay. Karen Shah. Ansa. Ansa. Akash Deep Sharma. Mamta Sharma Yogesh Sharma Kada Valley Shaheb Sheikh Anisha Sivanuri Samta Sidhu Amandeep Singh Vishanji Singh Jashandeep Singh Mandip Singh Rajdeep Singh Rajdeep 
Ravinder Singh. Tejinder Pal Singh. Nikhil Kumar Siri Pandey. Snowa Malik. Gav Ralph Soharu. Give me one second. Can I get all of you to take your seat once you've got your award, please? Please take a seat. The procession is, the ceremony is not over. Okay. Mohit Sokal. Somewhere. Chirag Soratia. Raz Ali Subani Arvind Reddy Sudi Prem Narain Surya Devra Mukramal Hassan Said Soheb Irfan Said Tanvir Sultana Mani Deep Trailer Sai Barak Talapale Cho Tiha Manish Tupani Varshini Tirumala Sarvani Tumala Pale Mohammad Amir Udin Mohammad Ur Urreman Osman Okay Mohammad Usman Sindhu Vajrala Vasundara Shravan Shravan Pela Mulapali We Mulapali Komal Verma Pallavi Vej S 
Surrender Wanam. Mohammad Bajaj. Kasun Vikarama Ranta Senaraktap Yapa. Wamsi Krishna Yaram Seti. Saichan Yava. Meghna Yedla. Wamsi Yenu. Excuse me once again, everyone at the back, please take your seats, you have enough time at the end to take photographs. Bhavna Paravalika Yara. Yograj Ajay Yeah Anudeep I got Anudeep Anudeep Sai Kiran Gatu Vijay Kumar Reddy Chinda Nisha Bhatia Druba Adikari No Min Tuan Wong Sadula Hussein This chair, this concludes the conferral of the Masters of Degree. Thank you. I would like to call upon the VIT Provost, Professor Andrew Scone, to present the bachelor's degree to our graduates. Hello everyone, can I please request all of you, those who are standing behind, please take your seats because it's not fair enough for those who still has to got their degrees. So we don't like empty chairs here. Please come back to your seat and give them the respect too. Thank you.
I now call upon the academic discipline head of information technology and systems, Professor Sebastian Ng, to present the graduates for the bachelor's degree. Professor Ng. Mr. Provost, I have the honors to present to you the graduates for conferral of the degree of Bachelor of Information Technology and Systems. Ayush Akari. Supash Akari Payal Agravo Hafiz Ahmad Awal Akbar Sikanda Ali Amodeep Singh In Saman Arose Sushant Ariel Muhammad Asid Aslam. Mass Avails Tajashi Tajashi Baxi Suni Banija. Sujit Barrow Proshant Basnet Sonu Basnet Bobby Bastola Chumura Chumura Isivari Bagi Kumara Singh Bharatva Maha Kumaragi Soha Baideni Michel Bata K. 
Karajat Chak. Amrit Chalagain. Dipindra Dehal. Usha Dehal. Sandesh Dakota. Sankapa Dakota. Rohit Dugana. Jonathan Dijan. Omar Del Chick. Suzanne Gatturo. Garima Garima. Arinash Gatti. Prakash Gimia Ria Gujrao Akriti Gurum Gina Gurum Unath Gurum Amia Hamsa Hasham Hanif Haman Pri Chaudhry Mohammed Ismail (laughs) 
Shusan Kumar Jeswell. Sukhdeep Khan. Kartik Gengotta. Bandana Kaki. Akash Katel. Armand Jot Curl. Loveline Curl. Nadiv Curl. Rajdeep Kerr Sanjeev Kaka Abdul Basit Khan Mohammed Kida Ali Khan Saad Khan Rijam Kanal Wei Bin Liang Nitesh Mahajan Manjinda Singh <laughs> Abid Ali Meza. Mohammed Messin Norman Mustet Swapnaja Naganda (laughs) 
Sujan Nakami. Anjana New Pain. Mental Go. Mahish. Mahish Podel. Swagat Podell Subhas Poktel Anjana Powell. Srijana Powdell Zizan Rathik Ashok Ride Ikpao Singh Rai Nanit Reto Siu Rarao Shitis Raya Masi Garima Rakmi Sora rap me. Sujan rap me. Ramsaran Rigel. Davinda Sandhu <laughs> Dinesh Sepkopta Han Sheba <laughs> Muhammad Sand Shakrat <laughs> J. 
Janaki Rajiv Shah. Shabush. Sahil Sharma. Anata Streshta. Angel Streshta. C. Chen Streshta. Sikanda Lukman <laughs> Gupreet Singh Rishki Vijayati Simat Ashi Suvini Rachana Supedi Abhishek Suna Abhishek Rajesh Samrat Waja Harishankar Yadav Pridaya Yomi Mr. Provost, I have the honor to present to you the graduates of conferral of the degree of Master of Information Technology and Systems, Amadeep Ko. This concludes the conferral of all degrees today. Thank you, Mr. Provost. Coming next is our top student award presentation. May I invite VIT Council Chairman, Mr. Peter Batchelor, to announce this year's top student award. 
Thank you, Professor Ng. On behalf of VIT Council, I have the pleasure of announcing the following graduates for top student awards. These awards are based at the program level and are vigorously judged by a VIT academic panel before recommendation is made to the academic board. May I call upon the president of VIT, Mr. Arjun Sarapanani, to present these awards to the winners. For the top 2020 student award in the BITS program, the winner is Janika Rajiv Shah. In the same year, Janika also won the 2020 top student award in the application development specialization of BITS program. Congratulations, Janika. For the 2020 Top Student Award in the Network Specialisation of BITS program, the winner is Garimi. Garima. Is well done, Garimi. The winners of other awards are either attending the Sydney graduation later this week or cannot be present here today. Their names are listed on page 20 of the program booklet. I now invite the student representative, Janika Rajiv Shah, who graduates today with the Bachelor of Information Technology and Systems, to speak on behalf of all graduates. Um, hello, faculty, um, friends, and family. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm so grateful to see familiar and happy faces gathered here um, after the entire COVID period. So um, um, on behalf of um, the graduating batches of 2020 and 2021, I would like to thank um, our faculty, um, our, our family, everyone who has supported us throughout the three years. And um, today is, an, is, a, is a big day for us, obviously, and I'd like to congratulate all my fellow graduates as well. We have achieved a milestone today, and um, we, we could do it only with the equipment um, with, with all the guidance that VIT has provided us and all the support that our friends and family have shown us. So today, more than a day of achievement, it is a day of showing gratitude to everyone that we love. And um, um, especially during the last um, two, two years of COVID, um, things have been very difficult for all of us, obviously. And we have been away from our family a lot more than um, what, how, how, we, how much we usually are. So thank you so much. My, my mom's there in the audience um, and my, my father's watching online and my extended family and everybody, thank, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Janvi. And uh, now uh, I would like to call upon VIT Council Chairman, Mr. Mr. Peter Bachelor, to close the ceremony. Again, I want to reiterate my congratulations on behalf of the Council to all the students who've uh, graduated here today. I'd also like to reiterate our thanks on behalf of the Council to all the staff 
who've done a remarkable effort in the last few years. And finally, I'd like to thank the organisers of today, the VI team who, put, team who put this together with very short notice when we were alerted that we could actually have this function. So well done. I think it's the fastest organised graduation ceremony in history. So well done to all involved. On that note, I declare the 2022 graduation ceremony of Victorian Institute of Technology closed. Thank you. Thank you all for attending our graduation ceremony. This concludes the formal part of the event. Please join us for the refreshment. The venue staff will direct you downstairs. On behalf of VIT, we wish you all a great time in celebrating this very enjoyable moment with your family, friends, partners and graduates present today. Congratulations once again to all the graduates of the VIT. Would you now please stand while the official party leave the auditorium. Please stand. <laughs>